Man, so we got Bitcoin down almost 4% today, taking Phantom down over 7% as two key things weigh in on the market. We had the non-farm payrolls come out, showing that the labor market is continuing to tighten. We also have had Russia seize control of a major nuclear base in Ukraine. Yes, these two things are weighing on the market. We're going to look at the charts. We're going to look at the key levels of support and resistance. I'm going to be telling you what I'm doing specifically with my crypto portfolio. So make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to check out NordVPN. who have been kind enough to bring you these videos. Links in the description. It works out like two or three bucks a month, guys, to get yourself set up on a VPN. If you're not staying safe in crypto, if you haven't got yourself set up on a VPN, click the link in the description. Coupon code old man will take care of you in terms of a VPN. Now, let's take a look here at the Bitcoin chart. And as you can see, th these are hourly candles here. And ever since we opened up the day today, it's just been a downward force to the downside, right? Now, you'll remember we had this curling over pattern over, I mean, dating back to the 28th of Feb, we were here for a good couple of days here to the downside. And then we lost the level at uh, 43,000. And when we lost the level at 43,000, remember I said to you, this run up all the way from 37,968 to 38,000, all the way up to 43 was a really quick move to the upside. There's not much support or resistance here along the way. So equally to the downside, we can easily lose that same uh, amount to the downside as well. Have, having said that, we've got a few areas of support which hopefully can come in. And mainly the one I'm looking at is the psychological support from 40,000. I'm hoping that can come in and help us from a technical perspective. Now, the other important thing is we've got to create higher lows. We've got a low here, okay? We've got a low here. This low here is at 37,000. So as long as we rotate before then, so something like this is perfectly fine. As long as we then post our higher low here and a higher high, that's going to be really important for us here on Bitcoin over the next few days. Now, remember, what's weighing in on the market? Well, we know what is weighing in on the market. And uh, we've got Russian forces seizing Ukrainian nuclear power plant. NATO says it is not seeking war with Moscow. This is where things start to get really complicated. Remember when I said that we don't want to hear any rhetoric of these things escalating? Well, we had uh, the Ukrainian president uh, Zelensky, Vladimir Zelensky, come out and say, look, this is huge for Europe. This could wipe out all of Europe if they start firing on the nuclear reactors. And that's going to spook uh, a lot of markets, because if there's any sign of that kind of rhetoric that Europe would have to get involved to protect their own people, this could then be signaling that World War Three approach, right, which is going to obviously spook the markets. You've got the Dow Jones down 1%. You've got 1% one, uh, one, 1 uh, 1.17% down on the S&P and you got the Nasdaq down 1.66. Okay, so really interesting. We got the VIX up 10%, uh, which is showing volatility really is spiking right now. If we take a look at the fear and greed, that is notched down to 33 from 38, 39. Just remember, we're at 50 just a few days ago. So we're really starting to go back into fear territory. And it's as we expect, right? We expect things to bounce up and down. It's a volatile market. If I zoom out to the daily, remember what I said, we were expecting full volatility leading up to the CPI reading, which is this blue dashed line. That's going to be our March the 10th CPI reading for February. And then this dashed line is going to be the 16th of March, which will be the outcome of the FOMC meeting. That's when we're going to decide or find out how many uh, percent the interest rate is going to increase by. Is it going to be 0.25 or is it going to be 0.5 or is there going to be no increase? Now, obviously, you guys know my view on it. I fully expect a 0.25% uh, increase in the interest rates and Jerome Powell's pretty much telegraphed that. He's made that very clear that that's what's to expect. Now, to further help that story along, US unemployment rate falls in February. Okay, so we have had really strong US job figures. Non farm payrolls increased by 678,000, unemployment edged down to 3.8% from 4% in January, uh, and uh, on average, a gain of 400,000 jobs during the month. Okay, uh, average hourly earnings on private payrolls were 3.158, 31.58, sorry, little change from the previous month. Okay, so we know that the market is tightening, the labor market's tightening strength in the US labor market. And that further fuels Jerome Powell to be more aggressive with his interest rates. Okay, so data like this, all going into the arsenal of Jerome Powell, who by now, in six days, he's going to get the CPI reading. That's going to be his last piece of data. So this non-farm payroll plus the CPI reading he's going to get in six days. Then they're going to go sit down and then they're going to come out and make their decision on interest rates. Now, if the data is showing that the economy continues to overheat, i.e. strong labor figures and we get a strong uh, CPI reading in six days, maybe he comes in hard with a 0.5% incre increase. 
Um, I don't think that's going to be the case unless we get a crazy CPI reading uh, next week. I don't think that's going to be the case given the Ukrainian uncertainty. I think there was a chance he would have done 0.5% if this escalation didn't happen in this conflict, right? If we didn't have this conflict and this uncertainty as a backdrop, I think he would have went straight in for a 0.5. But given the environment, I don't think that's what he's going to do. Now, let's take a look at the phantom chart uh, because we're going to do both of these videos in one, guys, as I'm pretty under the weather today. But uh, as you guys know, I'm committed to bringing you these updates regardless. So make sure you hit up the like button. Make sure you're subscribing because uh, I'll never leave you guys in the lurch. And here on the daily chart on phantom, you can see we're falling out of our channel. Now, if I head over to the hourly, I'm going to show you exactly what's happened as Bitcoin has fallen four percent phantom has fallen at a multiple of that so we've seen phantom fall almost seven percent today bringing us out of our pattern here now this now as a price target you've got some support coming at 165 but thereafter the next pivot point on the in the channel is at 154 and then we're looking at 147 so those are the levels i'm looking at here for phantom and like i said as long as bitcoin rotates before that level our favorite altcoins will continue to rotate and get out of this mess as well if i head over to the daily here on phantom uh, before i tell you exactly what i'm doing with my positions you can see that we're trying to get some support but we're not it's in essence what we've managed to do like i said yesterday is we got rejected by our ema ribbon right so we ran up we thought we were getting some good momentum in this upward channel and then boom we've got thrown back down so we've not managed to flip our ema ribbon here on phantom if we look at the same view on bitcoin you'll see bitcoin's getting a retest bitcoin's holding up a little bit better here because it's trying to get a retest so as long as it can close above its EMA ribbon, which is sitting at 40,000, 40, uh, 40,900 roughly. As long as it can close where it is roughly, that would be fine. That could show some support off the EMA ribbon, okay? Now we also know with Bitcoin, we've got this interesting uptrend. So as long as we keep this momentum, even if we cool down a little bit and bounced off from this trend line, we're still good as long as we post a higher high. But the worrying thing is we've got rejected a good few times now from 44,500, one, two, three times. The second, the next time we come up, we really have to come up with vengeance. And almost what you end up forming here is you end up forming a triangle, okay? So you end up forming a boom, bounce, bounce. And as long as this trend line continues, we can start working our way uh, upwards and stop price in a triangle okay so that's what we're looking out for here on bitcoin overall we know this market is completely led by cpi inflation and obviously the ukraine conflict so both of those things escalated to the downside today we had stronger job figures which is obviously going to spook the market and again bitcoin decides to react like a risk asset um, moving to the downside uh when as a risk risk on asset right so risk has gone off as inflation is coming in hotter the jobs market is hotter we're expecting more hawkish action from the Fed, and that is throwing Bitcoin to downside. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope you guys enjoy this blend between technicals and fundamentals. Sorry if my brain is a bit slow in this video, just feeling under the weather. I just wanted to bring you guys the update anyway, because a lot of you will be sitting there thinking, oh man, what's happened? Why are we back down at 40,000? If we can hold 40 on Bitcoin, that'd be really a big sign of strength. But like I said, as long as we rotate before 37, we're good. We can even go to 39, 38, that's fine. As long as we create that higher low, get out of the woods and continue to the upside. But right now, we know we need to look at the conflict, look at the CPI and inflation reading. And historically, all this is going to be is this is going to prove itself as a moment to buy the dip. This is when we had peak fear, peak uncertainty after years of printing stimulus and the pandemic. Fed were increasing interest rates for the first time. The market is spooked. Stock markets were all super down. Uh, we then had, you know, the, the biggest uh, conflict in Europe for, for a long, long time. This is going to prove itself as a time to have bought the dip. So stay patient. Don't panic sell, see the course, dollar cost average if you can, hold and just see this course out. That's ultimately all you need to do in this period. Don't panic in, don't panic out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. Smash up the like and subscribe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link up a video to yesterday's video. Make sure you go watch that because I explain in detail uh, what's going on here with Bitcoin. So click through to that video and let me know what you think in the comment. Thanks for watching everyone. See you in the next one.